we are on board Air Greenland's A330-200 at the gate at Copenhagen and uh, getting ready to take off for Kangerlussuaq. Coming up. It's a beautiful September morning in Copenhagen where it still feels like summer. Where we're headed today, it's a whole lot colder, but I don't mind one bit because I've been trying to get to Greenland for years and today I'm finally doing it. Captain Alan Mollerup has invited me along for his pre-flight walk around today. This is Air Greenland's sole A330, and most people at the airline refer to it as the Airbus. It will occasionally do charter flights to other destinations, but most days it's faithfully plying this route between Copenhagen and Kangerlussuaq, returning to Denmark to spend the night before doing the same again the next day. This is also the main connection between Greenland and the rest of the world. There are Dash 8 flights to Iceland as well, but this is how most people and a lot of cargo make their way to and from the world's largest island. By the way, how great is this red color and the fact that it covers the entire plane? It's bold and instantly recognizable, but not garish. I reckon everyone should get a chance to join the pre-flight inspection at some point. It gives a whole different level of appreciation for the machine you're about to fly in and just how big it is. We are on board Air Greenland's A330-200 at the gate at Copenhagen and uh, getting ready to take off for Kangerlussuaq. What an exciting moment for me. I mean, I've seen these Air Greenland planes in photos, seen them a few times at the airport here passing through, and, and also, of course, so many times flying over Greenland on transatlantic flights and thinking, man, imagine actually going there. And uh, now I get to actually do it. Got about half an hour to boarding. I'm gonna do a quick walk through and check out the seats a little bit before people start coming on the plane, and uh, then we'll head back up to the flight deck. So this A330 has uh, Pretty typical economy cabin that you would expect. Seats arranged 242. Let's have a sit in one, see how they are. Oh, yeah. They're a little bit more like the old school seats, a bit thicker. I mean, they're not super soft, but they're certainly not exactly. Maybe I take that back. Are they a little bit slimline or something in between? Hard to say. The legroom is good. I think most people would fit fine in this seat. And I really like the 242 in general. Nice cabin, interesting motifs on the walls. I think this row 14 is clearly the winner with plenty of legroom. You can't exactly stretch your legs out all the way, but I think this is what I would try to get if possible for a four hour flight, four and a half hours. It's uh, perfectly good, I think. And then if we head up to the business cabin, I'm gonna be sitting in this seat on the way back next week. But uh, this is very old school and very nice, I think. It's 
cool to see a sort of old style business class in a way. Not as flashy as the typical life flats of this era, but uh, it feels a little nostalgic. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of space. Again, for a four and a half hour flight, this is great. Let's head up to the front office and get going, shall we? First officer Ran Piontek shows me how they run the calculations for takeoff. One with nation is dry, we don't have any engine as well. We have an estimate takeoff mass of 209. This aircraft can go to 230. Uh, and then uh, then the, the, the system tells us how to uh, you know preserve the engines as much as possible. Mm. And we do that by something uh, called flex temperature. Right. So uh, we're telling the computer that it's, it's 49 degrees outside. So it will not schedule so much fuel to the engines. Mm. So it's called a balanced field. So uh, with this situation, we have a stop margin of 34 meters. And this gives us a, a configuration too. And the speeds of V1, 151, 151, 155. Bravo 1 to Greenland 779, set up for right clear for takeoff, service wind camp. Greenland 
something like this. <laughs> and they call it people as cockpit. <laughs> to the tail to um, optimize the CT for lowest fuel because then it will be flying on the tail as well. Today we have been assigned uh, to fly Greenland 779 from Copenhagen to uh, Sandersrum uh, and uh, the departure time was 7 uh, UTC and then the back again is at 13.40 and normally uh, in Greenland we have this saying if the, uh, you use a ruler if it's a very short forecast, then it's good weather. And if the forecast is very long, like in Glasgow, then it's maybe not so good weather. Our destination, Kang Susuak, Senna Stamfjord, is a reporting of uh, easterly winds, good visibility, no clouds are detected, with a temperature of minus 4 degrees on the centigrade scale. Our alternate airport today for Sonnerstrom is actually Keflavik, uh, which is a almost one hour flight from Sonnerstrom. Then we check the sigmets and we can see today that we have on the east coast of Gre uh, Greenland we had some, um, some has uh, observed some severe turbulence uh, in this area which uh, we plot into a map and it's uh, between flight level 270 and flight level 400. Since we're heavy we cannot fly above it so uh, this is um, actually uh, affecting our flight. So this of course have my attention for the planning. And this is also again with the extra fuel if we need to circumnavigate this area. When we have this uh, information about aircraft status, payload, um, weather and no term, then we can decide any threats today, should we have more fuel, any other special uh, needs. So a lot of people um, would say to fly to a thunderstorm is a very exotic and it is, it is in some way um, a threatful environment because you are remote there's not so many airports. You have Tule in the north, which you're not allowed to go to. You have Nasaswak in the south. And I recall uh, when I was a new first officer, it was very on my uh, very uh, alert to everything. And you're still alert, but it's the things that uh, happen before they happen that you uh, see when you have been there for 100, 200 times. It's the same with Sonostrom. It's um, actually a very easy airport to operate. I think they only have. I think it's five to ten days a year where the weather can be a, a threat. The only thing is that it's remote, so you need to have the fuel for Keflavik. We have a one report in that area of uh, moderate to severe turbulence at the position 66 north 35 west. So this one is still relevant, so we will request 64 north one service direct to. Six north four west. And we are out of the area. Greenland seven seven nine request the six four north one zero west direct six six north zero four zero west zero. Copy clear now with six four north one zero west direct to six six north four zero west and share for the five three six seven What we have done is Instead of flying um, this uh, route, which will take us directly through the area of uh, observed turbulence, we will um, just modify our route to avoid this area here. South of this area. Uh -huh. Det er fint. 
Somewhere over Iceland, it's time for lunch. In the jump seat, you don't get a table, but I'm not complaining. Then we start to see icebergs. Greenland is close, and soon this glorious place comes into view. In case you were wondering, SIGMIT stands for Significant Meteorological Information. The fact that severe turbulence was observed along our route meant we had to go around it. However, a little bit later the SIGMIT expired, so we were able to make a right turn towards a more direct routing once again. The mountains of eastern Greenland quickly gave way to the enormous Greenland ice sheet that covers much of this country. The pilots request forecasts for Kangalusuak, but also Nuuk and Ilulisat, where most passengers will connect to after landing. There's a small town at Kangalusuak, but mostly it's just a nice big runway to land at before sending everyone onward to their final destinations. Our approach speed. This is 142, this one says 141, it's close enough. Climb, go around gradient from 5.3. It will give us a landing distance of 1989 meters, a factored landing distance of 2288 meters, and that gives us a margin for 522 meters. It doesn't take long to cross Greenland, and soon enough we're preparing for descent and landing. Thank you. 
It was a lovely flight and landing into Kangerlussuaq on Air Greenland's A330. Have you ever been to Greenland? If not, does this make you want to go? Let us know in the comments. And stay tuned because we've got lots more coming from this incredible place, including the Dash 8 and various helicopters. In fact, there's my next ride coming in now. Thanks for coming along today. In Kangalusuak for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.